things. We're going to have uh, a gentleman come up who is no stranger to Second Baptist South. Uh, my dear friend and my brother from whom I have learned an awful lot who we have in the ministry gotten to be very close. Uh, both of us have got girls and so we draw from each other on raising these girls. You know, so both of us know what it's like to be up in a house and can't get to the mirror. You know, so anyway, we, uh, Reverend Patrick Kemp is, like I said, a dear friend and truly a man of God and a powerful preacher. So after the choir sings, we'll hear from the one and only my friend and my brother, Reverend Patrick Kemp.
So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you Praise the Lord, everybody. Aren't you glad you were worth it? Aren't you glad you were worth it? Not because of who you are. I know when you look in the mirror, you think you're fine. You think you look good. You're doing your stuff all up, putting on your makeup. You think you were worth it, but you weren't worth it by any measure or any value of your own. You were worth it simply because God decided to love. For the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible even says that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet his enemies, while we were antagonistic against God, he still decided to send his son to die for us. Isn't that good news? The art, brother Art, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, brother Art, brother Art, brother Art, brother Art, brother Art, brother Art. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Amen. Because this is the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is not a library. You don't have to be quiet. Don't you? No one's going to tell you. Shh. Matter of fact, they may ask, "What's wrong with you? Why aren't you giving God praise? Because He deserves praise. He deserves glory." He deserves honor. We've come here to praise the Lord. We've come here to give thanks unto his name for all that he's done for us. So my question is to you is, has he done anything for you? Has he done anything that will make you lift your hands? Has he done anything that will make you smile? Has he done anything that will make you say thank you, Jesus? Has he done anything that will make you say glory, hallelujah? Come on, wake up back there. Has he done anything that will make you praise his name for his love and his mercy endures forever? Anybody in here believe that he's worthy? Do you know he's worthy? Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands if he's worthy. Open your mouth. Open your mouth if he's worthy. Come on, give him praise if he's worthy. Give him praise. Don't get tired. He didn't get tired. He endured death, even the death on the cross. He didn't get tired. Come on, give him praise. This is what we've come to do. This is what we've come for. This is what we got up this morning for. This is what we got dressed for, just to come to this place and say, thank you, Jesus for your goodness thank you for your many blessings that i don't even deserve my work is not in me my work is in the love of the lord jesus christ and for that i'm grateful for that i'm thankful and i'm not ashamed to give him praise and to give him glory so don't you don't have to be quiet when you come up in here you can release yourself you can release yourself release some of that pressure that the world put on you this is what we come to say thank you Jesus for keeping me all week long thank you God our father in the name of Jesus we come to say thank you we thank you today for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice I will rejoice let us rejoice tells me that it is a choice to rejoice I can react one or two ways that I can soak and be in dismay or I can rejoice and give you thanks why because this is a day that you've made and because you made this day God there are possibilities of healing there are possibilities of deliverance there are possibilities to meet the prayer that we've been praying to you we've been crying to you all night long but because you made this day there is the possibility God that you will release my need so I praise you 
I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. And God, I give you praise because tomorrow I'm looking for a brighter day. Today is a brighter day just because you got up, because you rose. And so we give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus we pray. God's people say amen. Clap your hands and give them praise and say amen. Clap your hands and give them glory. Hallelujah. Be flat, brother Art. Be flat, if you will. B flat. That's B flat. Turn it up. Turn it up. Don't be scared. Turn it up. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing. It's worth. Why are you behind the curtain? It sounds like music in my ears. Sing, oh, oh, how I love Jesus. So you can't go to sleep no more. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. And say it is, there is a name. Sing, there is a name. I love to hear, yes, I love to sing its words. It sounds like music, it sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Come on, lift your voice, everybody. Sing it all, all. how I love you. Because he first loved me. Because he first loved me. Aren't you glad he loved us one more time? Because he first loved me. Come on, give him praise. He's worthy. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You may be seated. God is a good God, isn't he? And I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm happy to be here. I'm just glad to be a child of God. I'm glad to be a child of God. I give praise to God. Give thanks to uh, Pastor Pitts in his absence. Thanks to Brother Larry, uh, Pastor Larry, a care pastor here. Amen. Is he doing a good job? Is he doing a good job? Come on, encourage him. Encourage him. Encourage him. Thank God for his wife, Sister Jackie. I know keeps him on his toes. I got one too, so Lord have mercy. No, I don't mean just, just a female. I mean one like Miss Jackie who always keeps you busy and keeps you thinking and keeps you praying and keeps you mad, <laughs> keeps you upset, frustrated, but makes you happy. Lord have mercy. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me up in here. What you, what you looking at? <laughs> amen all of that and i thank god for her thank you sister jackie for being here thank god for sister cheryl uh who even this morning encouraged me so we thank god for that we just thank god for you the people of god and again and thank god for the opportunity to be an encouragement to you we pray that what we say what we do would simply encourage you we need encouragement amen we need encouragement amen so we're gonna talk to you and hope that we can encourage you and do like my dad says and do like pastor McReynolds used to say that the preacher stands and he preaches with the bible in one hand and with the newspaper in the other because we live in a world that people need to be encouraged 
And people need to know that God is not sitting off in the cosmics, minding his own business while we're going through what we're going through. That God is involved in every facet of our lives and God is concerned about every facet of our life. And he is concerned about each individual. Most importantly, he is concerned about you. Amen. You, Amen. you, and you. He is concerned about you. How many of y'all have a testimony? testimony that when you look back over your life and when you thought God wasn't listening to you God wasn't paying attention to you God came through and now you can look back on your life and say that there's nothing that can turn me around because God through his evidence through his manifestation has proven to me that he is there and that he hears my cry so it doesn't matter how hard it gets doesn't matter how long it gets hard it doesn't matter you know that God will come through my daddy used to say he wants to develop a trick track record with you it started when you were little then when you start growing you start growing it's like i tell my son-in-law he says well dad we're struggling i said yeah but if you look back every time you struggle you struggle at a higher level <laughs> can anybody witness to me you struggle you're struggling and things get easy for a while you're struggling again but look what you got now that you didn't have then you struggle at a higher level and so they say, just keep moving. Just keep moving forward. Right? Just keep plugging at it. That's what I tell my son. I'll keep plugging at it. Doing a good job. He's raising three boys. I raised five girls. He's raising three boys. So I have a good time with those boys. So we just keep plugging at it and we struggle. Hey, girl, what's up? We keep struggling, but we struggle at a higher level. Just keep moving and God will keep blessing. He will not put more on you than you can bear. Don't give up. Don't give up. Look at somebody and say, don't give up. Don't tell me you ain't thought about that. Look at them again. That, that may be the person just thought about it a minute ago. Giving up. Look at them in the face. Look at them in the eye. I don't care how ugly they are. Look at them and say, don't give up. Don't give up. Just hang in there. All right, stand with us, if you will. Stand with us and go to the book of 2 Chronicles. The book of 2 Chronicles, chapter number 20. 2 Chronicles, chapter number 20. Brother, let me know when you want me to ditch the handheld and... <laughs> oh, they use it for the recording. Oh, I thought he was going to sleep back there. That's why. <laughs> I told him, I said, you can't go to sleep no more. Move your curtain. <laughs> uh, yeah, he quickly put it up there for the recording. Uh huh. I don't want to hear any snoring back there, brother. Amen. Thank God for Brother Jordan and Brother Art. Amen. Give them a hand. Praise. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for this choir. Amen. 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 All right. Second Chronicles chapter 20. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say hold up. All right. Sounds good. All right. It's rather lengthy and lengthy. And actually, we're not going to read all of it. We're going to read uh, verses number one through four. Then we'll read verse number 12. Uh, then we'll read verse 14, 15, 17, and then 18 through 22, and I'll lead you, I'll lead you through that. That sound like a math test? Did I scare y'all? Y'all get ready to run out of here? You said you finished your algebra. You weren't trying to take no more, right? All right, verse number one, it says, it, it happened that after that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides, or excuse me, besides the Ammonite, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are at Hazaton Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. Jehoshaphat was shaken. Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Verse number 12, it says, O our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Someone say that with me. Our eyes are on you. 13, now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, 
in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus said the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. Someone should have shouted hallelujah right there. He says, tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Someone say, with you. With you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Someone say, with you. with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. When the Levites of the children of the Korth, excuse me, Korthites and the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. Verse number 21, and when they had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And when they begin to sing to praise and the Lord set ambushments against the people of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah and they were all defeated. Someone say they were all defeated. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, that's a long text. I know that's a long text. And actually, I, I would implore you that when you leave here. To read a little bit more chapter number 18 19 and 20 it's a fascinating text because it is the book of Chronicles to me the book of Chronicles it chronicles how God keeps his promises how God kept his promises and so not to King Jehoshaphat but also to his father Asa and one of his forefathers Solomon and David how God kept his promise when, when Solomon said, Lord, when they come up against us, when they come to devour us, will you protect us? And God simply says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. And here King Jehoshaphat is in the same place. He says, Lord, here come these people against us. Didn't you say that you would protect us? You, matter of fact, you didn't let us destroy them, the Ammonites and the Moabites, on the way to this land that you promised us. You didn't let us destroy them. Now, God, look how they are repaying you, that they've come to eject us, to kick us out of this land that you have given us. So today I want to talk about you, I want to talk to you about victorious living. Actually, I want to talk about how to live victoriously in a crazy world how to live a life of victory in a crazy world you do know this world is crazy you do know this world is antagonistic against God they don't honor God they don't regard God they don't value God they don't worship God and they don't want you to worship God they want you to depend on the government Government, they want you to depend on everyone else. They want you to depend on man. They don't want you to depend on God. You do know that, don't you? But we're going to talk today about how to live victoriously in a crazy world. Often our objective in life is to be worry-free. It is to be without concern of the provisions of life and the well-being of our person. We desire to be free of the issues, the cares, and the concerns of life all the unfavorable and the negative situations we desire to be free of those without dilemma and without conflict we desire peaceful pleasurable and carefree lives that sound like the way anybody in here want to live but the fact of the matter is that life is often filled with conflict turmoil setbacks failures disappointments and frustrations. 
Grandmaster Flash says it this way. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going. Oh, somebody know that. So I keep from going under. And sometimes on the way home, I, I figure, boy, it's like a jungle out there on that freeway. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under, keep from losing my mind. Right? I have to ask God, I ask God for forgiveness more on the freeway than I do any other time of the day. Because those rascals out there would just make you mad. What are you doing that for? Why did you do that? There was no reason to drive like that. But sometimes you got to wonder how we keep from going under, how we keep it all together, how God keeps us in our right minds when we want to do like the next person and lose our mind. It is indeed a crazy world. However, God will not have us to be ignorant regards of the hardships that we will endure in this life. In Matthew 5 and 10, he says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He says in John 16 and 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you will have peace. In the world, you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Isn't that good news? That's something you can smile about when you wonder why everybody is coming against you. That Jesus says, listen, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He was the son of the living God, and they didn't take it easy on him. They didn't give him a ticket to pass by. They didn't give him a get out of jail free card. And Jesus says, look what they did to me. They're going to do it to you also. All I'm trying to tell you is that trouble is going to come your way. You can't get around it. You can't escape it. One day trouble is going to come knocking on your door. When you are doing all the right things, when you least expect it. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how big a home you live in, how nice a car you drive, how much education you have. You will face situations in your life that you are going to need some help. Can I get a witness in here? So I come to encourage you that we can live a victorious life in this crazy world. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. We don't think like the world because the word says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind and don't be conformed to this world. What may look like to be a disadvantage to the world, what may look to make you upset to the world, sometimes you ought to come out skipping and have joy because Jesus simply said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Well, as I said, I believe 2 Chronicles is a book about how God keeps his promises. And people, as we sit here today, you can be assured that God will keep his promises. God doesn't forget his promises. If God make a promise, it is for sure. You can have confidence. You can take it to the bank because God will keep his promise. Even his promise to Israel when they were slack and when they became sinful and then when they became disregarding of God, God said, you're going to be in captivity for 70 years. And he kept his promise. And we walk around here with questions about how can a loving God do this and how can God who loves us do that? Listen, this is our sinful nature that caused us to have some diseases and some issues in our lives. But God will keep his promise even when we're sinful. The good news about that is when 70 years was up, he sent a prophet to say, okay, I haven't forgotten. Your time is up. Now I'm going to restore you. That's the good news in God's keeping his promises. That when we get ourselves right, that when we love God and walk for God and honor God, God will keep his promise. It doesn't matter what it looks like externally. We may not be able to see our deliverance. We may not be able to see our restoration. But if God promised it, you can take it to the bank and know that it's going to happen. Can I get an amen in here? 
Well, King Jehoshaphat, he's an interesting king. He's an interesting king. The Bible says that God was with him. God was with him because he followed in the way of his father Asa in that he loved God and he honored God. The Bible said when King Jehoshaphat became king, that he was a king that followed God and that he put away the groves and put away the altars to idol gods. And the Bible says that he brought God's people back to him and he had the people honoring God in the kingdom of Judah. King Jehoshaphat is, is interesting is that when he honored God, the Bible says that he attached himself to King Asaph uh, through marriage. King Asaph was the king of Israel, and they have a lineage of kings that did not honor God. So although King Jehoshaphat was one that honored God, he attached himself to someone who did not honor God. Are you all hearing me? Although King Jehoshaphat honored God, he attached himself to someone who did not honor God. You better watch who you attach yourself to. You better watch who you attach yourself to. Because my father says, either you will influence them, and if you're not careful, they will influence you. They will get you off track. They will distract you from doing what God has called you to do. They will distract you from being all that you can be in the service of the kingdom of God. So the Bible said he attached himself to King Asaph. And one day, even though King Jehoshaphat was doing good, even though Judah was doing well, the king of Israel asked him to come down and go to war with him against Ramah Gilead. He asked him to go to war with him. And so King Jehoshaphat told him, you know, your people, my people, your God, my people, we'll go, God, we'll go to war with you. We with you. We got you. But I need to hear a word from the Lord. Is there a prophet that we can hear from, that we can seek what the Lord would have us to do? So King Asaph called his prophets, and the Bible says there was 400 of them. And he inquired of them and said, should we go to war to Ramah Gilead? The prophet says, yes, king, go to war. God will be with you, and will give it into your hands. And so King Jehoshaphat said, okay, but is there a prophet of the Lord? Isn't that interesting? You got 400 men saying God is with you and go and he will put it into your hands. But you got this man who honored God, who could sense that this, this ain't God. Because oftentimes when God tells you to do something, the crowds are not going to follow. The crowds are not even going to understand. The crowds are going to question what God told you to do that? Uh-uh. Because people get comfortable in their current situation, and when God tells you to do something, it's generally out of the ordinary. I tell my girls, if you're going to do something great for God, it's always controversial. It always causes you to lose friends. It always causes people to look, like, look at you like you've lost your mind. That's the reason we must have faith, that we must be strong in the Lord. If God speaks to us, we got to know that God's got our backs Amen. when man doesn't have our backs. King Joseph says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, no, that's too, that's too in concert. That's too symphonous. Is there a prophet of the Lord in the house? King Ahab said, yes, there is, but he never prophesies anything good. I, I don't like him. He never tells me what I want to hear. He's not, he's not on my side. He always tells me something bad. King Jehoshaphat says, go get him. So he sent his servant. He got Micaiah. He says, we want to go to war. We want to inquire of the Lord. Should we go to war? Micaiah comes and he says, yes, king, go to war and God will give it into your hand. And King Ahab says, man, how many times do I have to tell you to tell me the truth and don't lie to me? Even King Ahab knew he wasn't telling the truth. Micaiah says, okay, if you go to war, you won't make it back. This is what I saw. I saw God's people scattered. And without a leader, they all went to their own homes. He suddenly turns to King Jehoshaphat and says, see, told you, never says anything good. As I told you, and he said, take him down there, put him in jail, get him, give him nothing but water and beans, and when I come back, I'll deal with that. Micaiah says, if you make it back, 
then God is lying. So they go down the war, and King Ahab, he's got this brilliant plan. He's got, listen to this. This, this. The Bible's full of drama. He's got this brilliant plan. He says, listen, King Jehoshaphat, he said, I'm going to dress like one of these soldiers. I'm going to camouflage myself to be like one of these soldiers. You put on your kingly garment. You sit back here in the chariot. You, you look all cool and important, and I'm going to go and fight with, with the rest of my soldiers. So they got in the battle. King Jehoshaphat, the king of, 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 of the, the other king of Ramah Gilead says, listen, don't fight with anyone, great or small. Go and get the king. Go get the king. So here's King Jehoshaphat back there in his chariot, in his, in his royal garment, and they start to press upon him because they've got orders. Get the king. Nobody but the king. So they start pressing on him, and the Bible says that King Jehoshaphat called on the name of the Lord, and the Lord delivered him. The Lord diverted those that were coming and pressing upon him and delivered him. Then the Bible says something very interesting. He said the soldier had nothing in mind, just perhaps, just, just happenstance. He's sitting back there, he mounts his bow, and he just shoots. It wasn't aimed at anything, wasn't trying to hit anything, it's just... And the Bible says that bow hit King Ahab right at the breastplate scene. They drug him out of there. The battle went on all day. At the end of the day, he died. Can I say something? You can't hide from God. Can I say something? You can't fool God. Can I say something? You're not smart enough to outwit God. You can't devise your own plan to bring your own outcome. You've got to have faith in God. Can I get a witness up in here, somebody? That's an interesting story. That's interesting to me. He's out there with all those soldiers, and nobody aimed anything, and God got him right where he was. He knows right where you are. You can't hide in the crowd. God knows where you are. So it's very interesting. That's what we pick up with King Jehoshaphat. I had to tell that because I got to give you King Jehoshaphat's position. The Bible says when God saved him and delivered him, he went home to Judah. He set his house in order. He called the judges. He says, when you judge the people, you got to understand you're judging for God. He says, don't have any respect of person. Make sure your judgment is right in the sight of God. He got the priests. He got the Levites. He sent them out to the cities to preach the word of God, to out, go out and praise and worship God. The Bible said he pulled his kingdom even more together to honor God. And when he was doing all the right things to honor God, he gets this news in verse number one in chapter 20. And it happened after this that the people of Moab and the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonite came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazan, Hazazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat was shaken and set himself to seek the Lord and to proclaim a fast in all Judah. I say that to say this. When you are doing all the right things, there's going to be some things to come into your life that will shake you. That will make you wonder, what am I doing wrong? And the fact of the matter is that you may not be doing anything wrong. You can be doing everything right. But yet you will face challenges in your life that will make you turn to God. Am I talking to anybody in here? Y'all got quiet. Y'all look like the librarian came by and said, shh, you're too loud. Am I talking to anybody in here? You don't have to be doing anything wrong. Your life can be peachy king. You can be working on the freeway, going to work, coming from work, being prosperous, nothing wrong. And all of a sudden, there's a challenge in your life. Maybe an accident on the freeway. Maybe you get news of a loved one is sick. Maybe news about your child, about your parents. Everything is good, going good, and all of a sudden, everything is going so wrong. All of a sudden, your world gets turned upside down. 
like some of the things we, we've been going through in this society that you that you, you, you got to look at and you just can't understand. Well, you got to understand that this is nothing new. There's just more exposure. You understand? You don't have to have a, a high-powered uh, SLR digital camera to capture things in your life anymore. You don't have to have a producer's video camera. Everybody's got them. I was going to say take it right. I left my phone in the car. Everybody's got high-quality video and pictures on the phones you carry every day. You've just been exposed to more. It's exposing that things have not gone away. They may have been subdued for a while. And Donald Trump, Lord, 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 forgive me, Lord. <laughs> you empower people to bring their real feelings out. I can't tell you how many people, when Donald Trump started talking crazy, I see him driving down 99 freeway with patriot flags. And I even saw a Confederate flag, and I'm going, Lord, have mercy. It's a crazy world. But we have to know how to live victorious and above that in this crazy world. Not that we're not concerned about it, not that we don't care about it, because we ought to be involved about it. My wife will see certain things on TV, and she said, oh, Lord have mercy, oh, turn that off. And I just said, babe, did you write the network? Oh, I ain't going to do no good to write the network. But if they don't know your opinion, they don't know your voice. Everybody else is accepting it. They think you're accepting it, too. If you don't like what they're showing on TV, I don't like it. Write the network. I don't like to see men kissing men, women kissing women. Y'all got real quiet. Am I, am I in a strange place? Am I, thank you, am I in a strange place? Yes, she just discuss it. Write the network. Send them an email. Tell them, tell them your Christian world views. We tend to hide our Christian world views and the things that we are concerned about. And if we don't say anything, it's just as acceptance as everyone else. We can't be afraid to face conflict. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I don't mind having conversations at work when people are talking about black and white and the things that are going on in society. If you ask me, I'm going to give you my opinion. So then don't come tell me that's inappropriate. You asked me. I'm not a robot. But we have to learn how to live victorious. In this world, I'm not against folks setting buildings on fire and blowing things up. We have to learn how to live victorious in a crazy world. And King Jehoshaphat, I think he gives us three things, three short things on how we can live victorious in a crazy world. Number one, when King Jehoshaphat got this news, you notice what he did. What did he do? Somebody talk. What did he do? He called for a fast. He took action and drew him back to God. There are things that are coming in our lives that draw us back to God. Because you know when we're doing good, when it's all going on. You know we don't pray like we normally pray. <laughs> you know Wednesday night, oh, I'm tired. I don't know if I can go to Bible study. But boy, you let trouble hit your house. You be waiting at the door. <laughs> hey, Deke, I'm glad you're here. I've been waiting to get in. I need to pray. Am I right about it? You know when things are going good, we, we take it easy on God. But God likes us close to him because he understands that he is the strength that we stand on. So the first thing he did, he prayed. He prayed. So the first point I want to make, if you're going to live victorious in a crazy world, you have to default to prayer. Does that sound like a good one? You have to default to prayer. Not throwing Molotov cocktails, what they call them. You know, they put gasoline in the bottle and they get frustrated. You have to default to prayer. The Bible says men ought to always pray and not faint. Prayer should be a default reaction for the people of God. I, I want to say this because I don't want you to get tripped up. Don't, don't think some things don't frighten you, don't shake in you. Don't think that 
you're a robot and man, if you, if you if prayer's not the first thing on your mind, or oh, there's something wrong with you. Notice King Jehoshaphat when they brought him that news. The Bible says he feared. You catch yourself sometimes when you when you react, you you kind of go off and then you gotta pull yourself together. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You kind of pull, you gotta pull yourself together and understand, wait, I'm I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. This this is not what I'm supposed to do. Sometimes I get things and I react and I go, oh, wait, oh, Lord Jesus, help me, help me. Yes, sometimes it take, takes us away or out of our normal things, but we ought to learn how to default to prayer. We've got to make prayer our priority. He was shaken and he says, I, he says, uh, did you know that prayer is a choice? You can choose to pray. You can choose not to pray. Like I said earlier, the Bible says this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. It means I have to set my will to rejoice. There's another reaction you can have that is not to rejoice, but I will set my will to rejoice. Prayer is a choice. When we live for God, we have to understand that if we trust God, if he is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do, then I don't have a problem praying. Because his power is much greater than mine. Amen. What I can't do, he can do. So why not put my hand in his hands? Why not put my life in his hands so that he can lead me, so that he can be my battle axe? We must default to prayer. Oswald Chambers says, we use prayer as a last resort. Jesus wants it to be our first time or our first line of defense. We pray when there's nothing else we can do. Jesus wants us to pray before we do anything at all. But most of us would rather spend our time doing something that will get immediate results. We don't want to wait for God to bring about results in his good time because his idea of good time is seldom in sync with ours. Right? We live in a microwave age. We want it now. We want it right now. We don't want to put it in the oven and let it simmer real good and, and let those flavors marry each other. See, I've been watching the Food Network. Let those flavors marry each other. We don't want to do that. We want it in the microwave. Flip it in and in 30 seconds we got it. Let it sit for 30 seconds. It'll get hard. <laughs> we want it now. If you tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. Yeah, he wants to be first in line. We must default to prayer. Yes, the, the, it's either fear or faith. According to 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear and faith cannot mix. It's either fear or faith. My dad used to tell my mom, because I had 10 sisters, and, you know, mom would worry up at night, walking the floor. Daddy said, oh, mama, go to bed. Well, honey, he said, well, if you're going, he said, if you're going to pray, why are you walking the floor? If you're going to walk the floor, why are you praying? Fear and worry, fear and faith cannot mix. It's like oil and water. You've got to determine, again, to default to one or the other. So number one, if we're going to live victorious in a crazy world, we must default to prayer. King Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat defaulted to prayer. He called for a fast. And after he defaulted to prayer, number two, if we're going to live victorious, not only default to prayer, but we must devote to the preaching. Devote ourselves to the preaching of God. Because after they prayed in verse number 14, it says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah, all you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. But it is the Lord's. I like the appeal you did for Wednesday night. Because we have to learn that the battle is not ours, 
but it's the Lord's. On Wednesday night in Bible study, we learn things like hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. You learn things that gives you tips on how to live during the week when things are hot and heavy, right? Wednesday is hump day, right? We're getting ready to go over, but Lord, the week brings some challenges in our lives, and it's only when we study the Word of God and know the God that we serve that we can stand in confidence that God will protect and keep his people. So we must default to prayer. Not only that, we must devote to the preaching or to the word of God, where God gives us tips on how to live, that we not become ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, knowing that it is the power of God unto salvation. The Bible says in Psalms 119 and 105, the word is a lamp unto my feet, and it is a light unto my pathway. Uh, Psalms 138 and 2 says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word even above thy name. His word is magnified even above his name. So if we're going to learn to live victorious in a crazy world, number one, we must default to prayer. Number two, we must devote to the preaching of the word of God so that we can gain faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. So number three, and I'll let you go, lest I keep you bored. Number three, number one, default to prayer. Number two, devote to preaching. And number three, if we're going to live victorious in a crazy world, determine to pray. Look at somebody and say, determine I didn't hear you. Let me wait. Look at somebody. Wake them up. Wake them up. Look. Say, determine to praise. There's another choice word. Determine to praise. There are many things we can get down about. There are many things you may have a right to be down about. You may have a right to be angry about. You may have a right to be mad about and upset and frustration about. You have many rights, but you've got to determine to praise. You've got to determine that whatever comes my way, I'm going to give thanks because the Bible says in Philippians, says to be worried or be careful about nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Then it says, with thanksgiving, let your request be made unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind. That's the goal. We need our hearts and our minds to be guarded in a world today. Because it is a crazy world. We want God to guard us so that my frustration, so that my anger won't land me behind bars or won't get me shot. Talk to me up in here, somebody. We want God to guard us so that we have to determine to praise. The Bible says in verse 21 and 22 that King Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him in the beauty of holiness. As they went out ahead of the army, the singer says, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. The Bible says they begin to sing and to praise and God worked on their behalf. What did he do? The Bible says that God set ambushments against those that came up against them and he destroyed them all. When we determine to praise, we don't have to fight because praise becomes our weapon. You don't have to take up swords. You don't have to take up guns. Praise becomes your weapon. And when you praise the God that you praise, he will fight for you. He will go on your behalf. He will bring deliverance. He will bring relief. Anybody witness it here? Have you ever gave God a praise in time that people would think you should have given God a praise and God fought for you? I stand here to tell you that I've praised God many times when I wonder why I was praising. And God fought for me. God delivered me. God delivered my children. God brought relief to my household. I'm a witness what God will do. So I don't just stand here talking because I'm preaching. I'm preaching because I know what God can do. My mother used to say, he's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. 
He's taken all my sins away. That's enough. That's a miracle that he's wrought in my life. But we've got to determine to praise. I'll tell you what praising looks like. Praise looks like when we say out of our mouth that I'm more than a conqueror through him that loves me. Praise says that I am the head and not the tail. That I am above and not beneath. That I am the lender and not the borrower. Praise says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And for those who are called according to his purpose. Praise says that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have been devoured. I would have been destroyed. I would have been swallowed up. I would have been taken away. But if it had not been, for God who protected me, who kept me, who kept me in right mind, right mind. Where would I be? That's what praise says. Praise says I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. We got to determine to give God praise. When he cut you off on the freeway. Well, thank Jesus I didn't end up on, in the ditch on the side of the road. We got to determine to give God praise. Praise is your weapon. Praise not only keeps you, but it gets God involved in your situation. You do know the Bible says that God dwells in the praises of his people. God resides in the praises of his people. God lives in the praises of his people. So if I'm in a situation and I want God close to me, I'm going to start praising him. Thank you, Lord, that you, didn't, that you didn't take me away. Thank you that you kept me here. Thank you that it didn't destroy me. Thank you I might be going through. I might be facing challenges. But thank you because you're strengthening me. Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew thy strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be with. Oh, y'all ain't rejoicing with me up in here today. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Lord, thank you for strengthening my heart. Thank you for strengthening my heart. When I wanted to give up, when I wanted to walk away, when I wanted to throw in a towel, thank you for strengthening my heart. We've got to determine the praise. Determine the praise. Let me tell you something about the bat. People think bats are blind. Bats are not blind. Bats don't see colors, but they're not blind. Bats don't come out in the daytime because it, it bothers them. So what does bat do? Bat lays in the daytime and it comes out at night. At night, what does he do? The bat emits a sound from his mouth. And when that sound goes out, it hits the solid. It hits something solid. And it comes back to the bat. And the bat knows that as he's flying, there's something there. There's an obstacle there. There's something in his way. That in order for that sound, when it comes back, he says, there's something there, so I've got to fly around it. It leads him. It guides him so that he's not running into something that will stop his progress. Well, I come to tell you that if we're going to attack and address those things that come in our way that, that will stop our progress, we've got to emit a sound from our mouth. What does that sound sound like? It sounds like praise. That as we praise God, God will lead us. God will guide us around those things that come to stop us, that come to stop our progress, that come to keep us from being all that we can be for the kingdom of God. We ought to learn how to emit a sound from our mouth. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, hallelujah. Somebody say, bless the Lord. Somebody just scream. Ah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is worthy of praise. If we're going to live victorious in this crazy world, we've got to default to prayer. Amen. Devote ourselves to the preaching of the word of God Amen. and determine to praise. Amen. Determine to praise. The Bible says, God says, you go out and you praise me, I give you the victory. And he destroyed them all. No one left over when they determined to praise God. Amen. Can you put your hands together and give God praise in here? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Praise him like you heard the word. Praise him like you believe the word. Praise him like you're going to work the word. Will you praise him in here? Will you praise somebody? Lift your hands. Somebody lift your voice. Come on, stand on your feet. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we bless your name. God, we magnify your name. We thank you for this place. We thank you for allowing us to come in this place and be encouraged in your word, to be encouraged in your word, because your word will not fail. It will not give in. It will not give out. It will accomplish whatever it goes out to accomplish. So we thank you that we have confidence in your word. Thank you, Jesus. Just a little time, just a little time. I want to give time. Does anybody need prayer? Anybody want prayer? You're dealing with something in your life. You're dealing with something in your life. And it's heavy on you or you're about to give up. You want prayer, we'll pray for you today. Because we believe that God will guard your heart and mind. That as you're giving him your prayer request, he says, with thanksgiving. I found that very interesting. That as I'm praying to God, then I can praise God. Why, why, why when I'm praying and when I'm uh, setting my position, uh, petition before the Lord, will I give God thanksgiving because I have confidence that what I give to God, that he hears me and that he is able and he is willing and he will do according to his will. Anybody need prayer? We just want to pray for you. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. We don't want you to give up. We don't want you to give in. God hears you. God heard you today. And God is just standing here to tell you that you can live victorious in this crazy world. Anybody want to live a victorious life? One more time, give the Lord a hand praise. And thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Give, give your hand praise for Pastor Larry as he comes.